you know, but the hospital I was in is one of the leading hospitals in the world. It's Drs. Fred Epstein and Dr. Alejandro Berenstein founded this institute. And here, Dr. Berenstein described the, the importance of compassion with medicine. Take a look at this. You know, can you imagine you come to a hospital, you're okay, but suddenly they put a pinky and they put an intravenous here and they put some tube here and tubes all over the body. Oh, it's extremely scary. In our institute, we, we're now more and more learning about techniques of compassion. You know, we had a great, great opportunity recently to have His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The mental attitude or mental concept is uh, very, very useful uh, when you face harm. And that's where we learn. Western medicine is not the only thing in this world. And what we learn is that compassion has a lot to do with healing. If I convey to you care, if I give you the positive aspect of it, you yourself, your chemistry inside probably, becomes more balanced, which will help you heal. There's no magic in this. The most important thing that each one of the people that work at this institute is do not forget why we're here. And that is, we're here to help people. Thank you very much, Frau Now. Now, my next guest, you saw in this tape when Dr. Berenstein was talking, they brought their infant son to this hospital to have some work done because of a, a they'll explain it themselves. Please welcome Yvette and Tyrone to the show. <laughs> Dr. Pryor has been on the team of doctors that's worked with Yvette and Tyrone, your son, Kevin, why don't you tell us what happened with your son? <clears throat> well, actually, uh, my wife uh, was late, so we were going to induce labor. And uh, so uh, everything was going well, and then they noticed that Kevin's heart rate dropped. Um, so the doctor told us that they would do a cesarean. Um, initially, we were really, we wanted to do this naturally, but um, we said, let's not take any chances. So, you know, we said everything's going to go well. We're comfortable. Um, so I was in there uh, as the proud father, 35 millimeter in one hand, camcorder in the next. Um, clicking away. Just, just clicking. And they took him out, um, and he seemed a bit lethargic. And at the time, I wasn't sure what was going on. And subsequently, I've learned so much about what was happening. But they ext I mean, intubated him, meaning they took a tube and put it down his throat because they saw that he was not breathing uh, appropriately. Now, of course, I'm videotaping this. Mm -hmm. And as I'm videotaping, I'm watching the faces, and I'm a bit concerned because I can tell that something isn't quite right. I was then told that Kevin had something they thought was called cerebral arterial venous malformation, or in short, an AVM. Uh, this, in essence, means that the capillaries uh, did not develop appropriately. Blood flow was so tremendous that he was in jeopardy of having some sort of stroke or an aneurysm. I put him in congestive heart failure. Mm as well. So the next morning, uh, we wound up rushing him right away to uh, Beth Israel, Beth Israel North, uh, where we received some of the most um, incredible care. Subsequently, we've been in about five other hospitals, and it's by far that the care we, re we received at Beth Israel was by far superb. And he, as your son, has undergone now five operations? Uh, a total of seven. Seven operations. What Kevin has is a short circuit between the arteries and the veins in his head. So instead of the blood slowing down to drop off the oxygen and pick up the waste products, it just shoots through. Uh, so what we did with him is we put uh, glue into the art in the short circuit to plug that up. Uh, in you, we used particles, little plastic particles, but uh, it, the flow was too fast in Kevin to use particles, so we had to have something that we could control better. Uh, he was actually one of the first patients that we treated at Beth Israel North. He came over. We weren't really ready for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but but now, in, in some ways, this is part of the reason why you wanted to come on the show too. Because oh, certainly, though Ke Kevin right now the prognosis looks good, right? It does. But it also may have helped the prognosis of thousands of other children because the technique has now been learned with your son. Treating really small babies is uh, not done very much uh, a around the country. Uh, we have patients from uh, South Dakota and Illinois and all over the country sent to us because we have more experience with this than 
basically anybody else in the country. Let's take a look at what, a little bit of what Kevin's been through since birth. Take a look at this tape. When Kevin was born, he was found to have an enlarged heart. He was transferred the second day of life over here to Dr. Berenstein. Dr. Berenstein was very clear from the very beginning about what was wrong. Um, we did not, you know, he didn't mask it. He said, you know, we have some very significant problems and it's going to be a very difficult, long battle. But he was always very confident that we could continue to fight and make a difference. And the moments were scary. For the first, once again, four to five months, each day was a battle for his life. And subsequently, we've been battling since. We look alike. Baby looks just like me. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. You have to talk to him. He's looking at you. That's your brother. Kevin. He smiles at you. Very softly, not hard on his head. Well, once again, we feel as though uh, this boy in particular is our family. <laughs> um, as I said before, this this they are the reason Kevin is here today. And they were a vital part of his development. They were a vi vital part of um, his everyday being, his personality all the love and the playing that they did with him, he, he shows that at home. Um, as I said before, when I left here every day, I knew that this staff was here, and they would give him all the love that I couldn't, because I had another one to go home and take care of, so I couldn't be here as I wanted to be. But um, these guys are beyond the best. Gotta take a break. Before I do, please welcome Kevin and his big brother Al to the show. Let me take a little break. We'll be back right after this. You had just adopted your oldest son, correct? Yes, we're actually in the process of following so, through with the adoption. But um, unfortunately, things kind of got put to the back burner when, when Kevin came into the picture. But um, our goal when we, we took Al into our home, um, I worked with him uh, for about a year before my husband and I fell in love with him and took him into our home. Um, we never imagined that we would be fighting for our own child's life and have to put him through what we've been through, uh, the late nights at the hospital, uh, compromising his, his time, um, that was his. And now we had to supplement it by, my husband would tell you, late nights at Chuck E. Cheese at 10 o'clock at night after we've left sure. Kevin at the hospital. Sure, but I mean, it also says a lot about you as a family because they're adopting a child and, and trying to split time between making sure each one gets the right amount of love. So um, uh, our prayers go out to you and I hope Thank that Kevin you. stays. Well, things that can save our lives, but to do this, there's money is required. And Yvette, you wanted to say something. I just wanted to say we're in the process of trying to start a foundation in Kevin's name for, to help families to go through these catastrophic illnesses. We would never imagine two years into this, we would still be fighting for Kevin. There's not a lot of resources out there that allow us to fight without the, the worries of our, our household and how we'll, we'll maintain. So we're putting together a Kevin Corbett Catastrophic Illness Foundation to help these families that are going through the same thing as we are. And we'll put that number up on the screen if you want to send in a donation. I should say that so far Kevin's medical care has been about two million dollars. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Just so you understand what we're talking about. And, and, and hospitals like Beth Israel North that are put together to help us, they can't do these kinds of things for free. They need some help and there are a lot of children that can be helped. If you out there right now Put a dollar in the mail tomorrow to the Foundation for Beth Israel North. Just think about how many young children, in Kevin's case, we could save and help because they'd be able to say, okay, we got money to pay for them. So I'm going to beg you all, put some money in the mail this week. Let's start helping some of the programs that are helping us stay alive. I want to thank all the doctors on stage. Thank you all for being here today. And uh, maybe in another four or five minutes, I'll bring you a show that says all the stuff is gone now. We've cured it all. Let me take a break. Not a break. i got to go. Join us on the next Montauk World Show. <laughs>